There are a lot of trends around concealed carry that ebb and flow over time, from caliber size to carry location, and even the accessories to support your pistol. But if there's one thing that we should all consider, it's how comfortable you are with that gun. If, God forbid, you have to pull that hog leg in public, it's probably gonna be the worst day of your week. Okay, maybe even your life. So you're gonna to wanna to be as dang good with that gun as possible. How do you select a gun that you will carry every single day that's still gonna help you be fast, accurate, and proficient? That's the question that we have to answer. And I see a lot of people hop online and shop for a gun, get it ordered to their FFL, or walk into a gun store and look for a specific gun because their friend told them, hey, I carry this piece, you should too, or their favorite influencer did a review on a certain model, and man, I gotta carry that thing. I'm here to tell you, I don't care what gun you choose to carry, but if you are going to be carrying a loaded firearm out in public, you have a responsibility to be proficient, fast, and accurate with that gun, which means you're gonna to have to do some training. So we'll get into a lot of the details, but if you leave here, let me make sure that you get this in the back of your mind. You should carry the biggest gun that you will carry every single day and the biggest gun that you're willing to train with on a regular basis. Now inside of that, when I'm picking a firearm, there's three aspects that I tend to consider. Shootability, concealability, and along with concealability, we have comfort and then compatibility. Now let's start with shootability. Let's get to ripping with these things. So a lot of people start carrying with a small gun for the first time. And that's great, I understand the reasoning, but we're just talking about shootability for the moment. If I do have to pull a gun in my day-to-day -day life, dude, I do not want to be behind the power curve. I wanna have as good of a gun, as big of a gun, as I can bring to whatever that scenario is. So let me shoot a few rounds here, and then uh, we'll talk about the recoil and the general feel. That malfunction was induced because I don't have overly large hands, but my hands were actually riding on the slide and it didn't close, that slide didn't close all the way and the hammer didn't hit the primer. So, okay, well, let's do this. Nick, when you first got into firearms, what did you start carrying? What were you encouraged to carry? Uh, Springfield XDS. <laughs> Springfield SDS, yeah. So a subcompact or maybe even kind of that compact world. Dude, when I first started carrying, I was carrying a Smith & Wesson Shield. Great little gun, but they are not that fun to shoot. Let me go grab one of those real quick. These shields, when they first came out, were fairly popular. They're super thin. They came in a handful of different calibers. They've upgraded over time, but this Gen 1, uh, it's pretty slippery. And there's a reason for the, the excessive amount of recoil for the size package. I'm trying to talk about all nine millimeter today because as you start to compare like 380, 40, 45, and so on, it starts to get a little bit jumbled. So we're just staying inside of nine mil. So the recoil on this thing is, there's no ammo in here. Well, let's go get some ammo. By the way, ammo is brought to you by Wideners. If you guys are looking for some ammo, they sell a ton of variety. They carry everything from your high-end stuff if you want to shoot long range, some self-defense, all the way to shotgun and pistol and so on and so forth. So if you guys are looking for some blammo out there, Wideners has some ammo. We do have a discount code in the description. Let me go top off. As I was saying, they are super thin, but the recoil on these is fairly sharp. It is controllable, but here's the reality. These guns today are often encouraged to first time shooters, first time people who are carrying a gun. For example, my wife. So this was a gun that uh, as I was carrying it, when I didn't know better, I was like, you should carry that too. And that goes back to, well, I carry this gun. I want you to justify the gun that I'm carrying by carrying it as well. I heard J.J. Rikaza explain one time that there's, there's two principles in regards to recoil control, and that's friction and leverage. So when I compare this gun to something like a Glock 17 or a Glock 19 or any of those compact or, or full-size frame guns, there's just less surface area for my hands to actually hold on to the firearm. I tend to swallow up most of this gun with just my primary hand, and my support hand doesn't give me much work when that gun is jumping around. Now here's the trade-off. With good training, you can absolutely, absolutely get there. The reality is, if you are gonna encourage someone to go get a subcompact gun because they're a first-time shooter, they're a first-time carrier, and they're gonna be more comfortable with it, we should also be telling them, hey man, you should probably go get a bunch of training and be really good with it. You should go shoot 500 rounds at minimum through your gun before you start carrying it. I'm not talking 500 rounds a month. Well, that's a good goal too. 500 rounds with a subcompact, yeah, it's doable, 
but it's nowhere near as fun as a full-size gun. So let me shoot a Glock 43X. A little bit more controllable, and I'm biased. I've been shooting Glocks for a long time. The lower bore axis, I know a lot of people talk about that. Everyone gets super wrapped around the axle on that kind of thing but look at how close that slide is to my hand. In fact, I even have a little bit of a, a Glock thumb, a friction point where that slide rides on my hand. And that's a good thing in regards to recoil control. But for a first time shooter, if I go tell my wife, hey, take this subcompact gun, I want you to carry it, and I want you to shoot 500 rounds through this thing today, it's not gonna be very fun. Let me, let me put it in one more term before we move on. If you're gonna get hit in your car by a Toyota Camry going 60 miles an hour, would you rather be in a smart car or a Toyota Tundra? You'd rather be in that Tundra because you have more mass, there's more crumple room, and there's more surface area for you to be protected and safe. So if I compare something like this 43X to a Glock 19, it's shooting the same round. I'm still being hit by that Camry, but because there's more surface area, the springs can be bigger, the slide is heavier, so on and so forth, I actually have more recoil control and I'm able to simply shoot this gun better. So, with more surface area, with a bigger gun, I simply shoot the gun better. And this is going back to the start. You should be carrying the biggest gun that you're willing to carry every single day and that you're willing to train with. The bigger the gun, the easier it is to shoot. With that in mind, we need to consider concealability. All right, we got ammo, ear pro, eyes and a pistol. Hey, speaking of, if you guys are looking for accessories like you see here, whether it's magazines, optics, iron sights, or said tools that are not to be named on YouTube, go ahead and check out Shooting Surplus. They're a sponsor of this channel, and they help us get content like this out to you guys every single week. Now, there is a link in our description. If you hit that, it will take you to uh, the email chain where you can sign up and save money on accessories like this. You can also use the discount code Dirty Civilian, one word at checkout, and save some money. We're talking about training today, carry options, make sure you guys are training. Try some different guns, trading with your buddies, get out there, get better, reps matter. All right, concealability. When people talk about big guns versus small guns, everyone always says, well, yeah, man, but it's not comfortable to carry a big gun every day. I'm here to tell you, carrying a gun at all is not comfortable, but it is comforting. Now, before we get on to how they actually fit and feel, I want you to look at my belt line and tell me how big of a gun it is that I'm carrying. The reality is it doesn't matter what gun it is that you're carrying. If you move around throughout the day, it's going to print. As you're doing things and you're shifting and you're lifting for stuff, yeah, man, at some point, the grip of that gun, the optic, whatever it is, is going to show. But here, I'm carrying a 34 with a red dot and an X300. Because of the holsters that have come out these days, there's a lot of great options. Uh, good holster options, everything from Hey Strategic, that new NCOG, to TXC, to Tier 1 Concealed, even Tier X Arms. They make great products for carrying guns every single day. Like I said, carrying any gun is not comfortable. You're putting a hunk of metal inside of your belt line or down on your ankle, even if it's in a shoulder holster, it's gonna be pulling on you and shifting you in different ways. That's not gonna be comfortable. Now, in regards to concealability and comfort, you have to consider how easily can I actually access that firearm. If I have a subcompact, there's simply less surface material, less surface area for me to get that gun out of the holster. When I'm grabbing this Glock 34, there's a lot of open space for me to acquire this gun. And then back to shootability, when I'm shooting this thing, people shoot these things in competition. People carry these on SWAT teams because they shoot so well. They stay really flat and they're easy to run. Now. The other side is I have a good buddy, Christian Guzman, who actually loaned me this pistol. And this Glock 43X was acquired by him after he had been carrying a Glock 34 and a Glock 19 for a long time. The reason that he went to this is because he rides a motorcycle to work every single day, most days, and he wants something that is small, compact, and is not gonna be a big piece of metal if he does fall. Now carrying a gun while you're on a bike can be dangerous. He's doing it right. Go talk to him about it if you're curious. But after he got a lot of good practice and he became proficient shooting that gun, he took those fundamentals from a big firearm down to a small compact pistol. And when he applied those fundamentals, 
it became a lot easier to shoot. So the point is, if you're gonna start with something, if you're gonna start someone else out on a firearm, I'd encourage you not to start them on something compact. Get them into a bigger gun, even a Glock 19 size, a P320, a Smith & Wesson compact, whatever the gun is that you choose, and get them building fundamentals where they're happy to go shoot 500 rounds. And then the gun that they choose to carry, even if it's a 43X, a Smith & Wesson shield, they'll still have some of those fundamentals that apply to this. Again, going back to the punchline here, get the biggest gun that you're willing to carry. I'm willing to carry a bigger gun than this, which gives me just a little bit of an upper hand if, God forbid, something bad does happen. Now, let's get on to compatibility. Hey, before we close here, I wanna show you guys something called the keel effect, as it's become, become known. The longer your gun is below your belt line, the easier it is to hide it and keep it from actually popping out and away from you as you're carrying it. So an anchoring point, kind of like having an X300 here, adds more surface area below my belt line and there's something that's actually stopping the gun from coming out away from me. The X300 is gonna be pushing into my leg, kind of right above my, uh, my tor or below my torso, and it's keeping that grip compact. So we're gonna take this uh, Glock 19, and as I throw this on, you'll see as I move around day to day, even if I tighten down my belt, what it's gonna want to do is push, and it's, it's allowing that gun to lean away from me. So as I'm just standing here without fixing anything, that's where you see a lot of people doing this, trying to push that gun down and pull it, suck it close back into their body. Whereas I have found, as you move around, that gun always wants to pop back up. Now let's swap this with an X300, throw it into here. Again, the keel effect, adding more surface area below my belt line. Now that anchor point, as I move around throughout the day, is keeping that gun from pushing out and away from me. It's just the nature of the beast, the way that the gun is designed. So as far as concealability goes, having a bigger gun sometimes does help. Ugh. Nick, I'm starting to run a little bit low on ammo. Can you, can you give me a mag? This is a Glock mag. Yeah. Do you have any Smith & Wesson mags? No. Okay. So you, you used to carry a Springfield. What do you carry now? Gen 519. Gen 519. When you first bought the Glock, why did you buy a Glock? Because everybody else had Glock. Yes, exactly. That's the point. Because everyone else has Glocks. And while that's not exactly a good reason, I should go buy this car, I should go buy this watch, I should go buy this phone, because everyone else has the same thing, understandably. But if you're looking for a phone charger at your friend's house, and you go, hey man, can you give me a phone charger? What are you expecting they're gonna hand you? An iPhone charger, right? The same is true for this stuff. If you walk into any gun store and you're looking for a holster, whether it's concealed carry, OWB, it doesn't matter. You're looking for iron sights, you're looking for pistol mags. What do you think most people are gonna have in stock? Yeah, some of the common three. Those common three are going to be Glock, Smith, and Sig, primarily Glock. They own the market right now, and that may change over time, but right now, any law enforcement agency, most of the military, Concealed carriers, they're carrying Glocks. Whether we're talking about 43Xs, 19s, 17s, they're going to be carrying that stuff, which means if you go to the range and something crucial breaks on your gun, you need a new recoil spring. Again, you're looking for iron sights. You're gonna be able to find the most popular items. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love Smith & Wessons. I have a love-hate relationship with P320s. That's a different story but I carry a Glock because when I roll around with these guys, whether we're going to the range, we're going on a camping trip, dude, if I forget mags or extra ammo, they've got all the extra spare parts. In fact, having two Glocks means that I can trade off with someone else and give them parts and pieces if need be. So consider what is most popular. On one hand, it may not be absolutely perfect for you, but if probably 80% of the industry is running Glocks really well, you can probably make it work too. Now let's wrap up as we talk about shootability, concealability, and compatibility, and loop all of these things together. All right, it's pretty simple, guys. Shootability, if I'm pulling a gun, I really wanna be good with it, and it's gonna be a lot easier for me to be good with a big gun. Concealability, I can conceal a big gun if I have the right equipment, holster, and I'm willing to be somewhat uncomfortable. Also, it's kinda just like wearing a watch and putting a, a knife in your pocket and everything else. 
once you start carrying it for a little while, it starts to become second nature. It's not uncomfortable anymore. Compatibility, because I've picked Glock, I'm able to go to any gun store, most gun stores in America, unless they're the FUDs. I can hop online and sure enough, if I need an optic cut, if I need uh, recoil springs, ejection springs, ejector springs, any of those other components, it's pretty easy for me to go acquire those. Now, as far as, since you guys are gonna ask, the belt that I'm carrying, this Agonic belt, has quickly become one of my favorites. When I first got it, I was a little bit unsure, but uh, now that I've been carrying with it for a little while, I am a fan. The holster that I'm working with, to be honest, I've bounced around a few over the years. I carried with a T-Rex sidecar for a long time. This incog goes back to the first holster that I ever carried, a Smith & Wesson Shield in a uh, original Haley Strategic G-Code incog, and then this uh, Safari Land Haley Strategic incog feels pretty nice. Inside of it, I have a Glock 45. Why Glock 45? Chambered in nine millimeter with a TLR 7A. It's not a very strong light, but I, I at least have some light capabilities. I like having a red dot playing with the closed emitter, the aim point acro. The dot does not print any extra than carrying without a dot or any of the other like RMRs, Delta Point Pros. And then the fact that I have a full size grip on the gun, it's the same frame as choosing something like a, uh, a Glock 17 or a 34 until we get out to the slide. So it's a compact slide with a full size frame. I carry it every day. It's very comfortable after carrying with it for a long time. And I can shoot it fairly well. At the end of the day, guys, you're gonna need reps. Dry fire, we do have a video on dry fire you should go check out, as well as shooting, you do have to go shoot. Start with the biggest gun that you are willing to carry every single day, get a lot of training, and help each other. If someone else needs help on the range, first time shooters have questions, get them out there and get some reps. Now we're gonna flip the tables here and make sure that Nick gets some rounds down range. So give me that there camera, dude.